it's such an honor to have you to the City of the Hiring Process. Yeah, so we, we now, we, we go way back, you know, it, was, it must be 2001 or two, right, when we started that stuff. Oh. Okay, so, so I, I was very privileged to uh, invite to join the Photo Box group. I was very privileged to get a, ver a very nice mandate. I got to present to the board, to the, to the strategy. They uh, gave me, uh, in a way, the opportunity to hire a number of individuals, uh, five to be specific, and I had an open head. So I kind of have a problem of how I'm going to hire all these very talented, in a way, expensive persons, ideally, right, and not exclusively, ideally without using solely recruitment agencies, right? Because <laughs> I know where we are, but I didn't want like a you know, six-figure appeal at the end of the whole process, right? So let me just walk you through the thinking and what we created. And, and the coolest thing of this is that uh, it's all open source, it's all Creative Commons, you'll see the stuff. And I guess one of the nice things of my job today is I, the, the I in CISO gets to define what's open information, right? So I get to talk to myself and say, yeah, I think we should publish this. So, um, so let me just walk you to the thing. So first of all is, uh, I didn't want this. In fact, I have this, right? What I didn't want, right, was to choose the right candidate, right, from here. So what I didn't want was, to, first of all, to read all this and have to pick 10 or 20 that would already be, in a way, biased for whatever reason, whatever I was on that day or whatever team was on that day. And uh, I didn't want to go through a process that looked like this, which in a way was almost like, just, that just to get the face-to-face -face interview, right? Like, I didn't want to do piles of interviews. I actually don't think I interview very well because I tend to see a lot of good stuff on the other side. I think I prefer to see, you know, the candidates actually in action and to see how we do that like that. But it's also a big scalability problem, right? I, I didn't want to spend hours and hours and hours and hours reviewing CVs, processing it, right, and interviewing, you know, literally dozens and dozens of candidates, right? It's also not fair for the candidate himself. So, I read these really cool books. So I did basically what I do all the time. If you guys know me, I, I go and buy 10 books, right? I buy 10 books, right, and figure out, you know, I try to read a couple, there's one that clicks. This one has the worst name and has the best content, right? Um, because the thing that clicked me, and it was very interesting, it, what this book is all about, it's about when you hire, you should be able to hire tomorrow, right? Not because you, you go fast or because you don't have, you know, you go 100 miles an hour, it's because you have a massive talent pool of people that you already vetted, that are already gone through the process that you're happy to hire. So the logic is that you find a job that you need, that you have a position, you should already have a massive bench of people that you can just go, yeah, that one would be perfect for this. And they already know you, they want to work there. So it's very interesting, that totally changed me, you know, that, the thinking of actually, I need to build a pipeline, not just for my six jobs now, but for the company, for the next roles, for maybe the roles below that, right, because they're all senior, so this was really cool. So then, you know, I guess six rows in there, and I'm going to put some, but there's an AppSec rule in there, just in case, right? You guys get stripped, right? Um, then I need to do the number process. Photobox has these really cool values, believe in each other, shake things up, move together. So that's my favorite one, right? So we shake things up. So I go, hey, I'm going to shake things up, right? And then, you know, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. So, um, but I also want to create a really good experience for the candidates. For me, it was very important that the candidates had a great experience. And when we said no, or we say no, I almost wanted to be very obvious. He's like, look, the bar is here, and you've got to here. And by the way, the successful candidate got there, right? So it's fair, right? It's, it's actually that thing. But this is not about the kind of gamification that comes like Google and some others done, where it's just freaking ridiculous, right? You go in there, and you're like solving a rocket science experiment, right? And you're going to do some other thing, right? So what we want to do is say, like, let's explore, let's expose you to what we do. Like, this is like, we have some recruitments there that the joke is that you look at it and go, well, that was like Monday and Tuesday. You know, that's like, that's real world. That's the stuff that we deal, right? So, uh, and the best thing, you know, this is one of the best emails actually was sent to me with somebody else, but to the team, but this was really made me smile because this is exactly what we're looking for. This is somebody who says, look, I want feedback. That's one of great interesting applications. I'm not going to apply for whatever reasons, but this is what, you know, it's an you know, interesting application. The channels are excellence, forward-thinking company, coming from a company investing in security industry, right? Really, I forward that to my, to my boss, right? You go, hey, look, right? But it shows, the HR people love it, but it shows that this already paints, you know, guy photo box as the company's doing, you know, you know <coughs> stuff, right? So, you know, it, it's important that all these make business sense. So we created um, a nice infographic, and by the way, you know, if you guys have a credit card, you can have a whole, uh, freelance network available for you, right? It's called Upwork or other companies, which is exactly what we did, right? So we have a really nice network of transcribers, designers, uh, technical writers, developers on demand. So we want an infographic, so we got some ideas of an infographic, right? 
So this is how we say we want somebody with technical skills, programming, and yada yada. We also created a nice little workflow to explain. And this kind of stuff does wonders for management, right? Because you present your ideas. So when I was explaining this before, they thought I was bonkers, right? When I started to show stuff like this, they go, oh, this is really cool, right? We, we should be adopting stuff on other parts of the business, right? So we also did some cool challenges. So the idea, and I'll walk you that at the end. So the idea here is basically you get something cool, and put a box and moon pig, that's thing. So we, we actually want to send stuff to the people's house. You get the thing, you solve it, you get a little flag, you go to the website, then you have some bunch of challenges. Then we do some working sessions, and then you have the face-to-face -face interviews, and then you get the job offer. Right, the idea is by the time you got here, it's almost like, let's just make sure that we, we can actually you know, be together for a long time, right? Because we should know by then that the match is really good, right? And then the final person is to meet the senior level team, and by then the candidate should be really excited, right? Which is kind of what you want. Um, this is a cool thing we did. So actually, this is kind of a binary thing. You decode it, gets the challenge, then you go to the website. This business card. Yeah, this was our business card, so this was a cool experiment. I actually post this internally. We actually have a bunch of devs internally solving it, which was pretty cool. Right? And then we created this website, which is the pbxgroupsecurity.com, which is just to, to make it clear, all content is Creative Commons and all the code is open source, right? And um, it's actually pretty cool. It's actually developed, uh, it's actually you push the GitHub, that goes to the API Gateway, it's all AWS, you hit the Lambda, that builds the stuff in Google, published to S3, goes to CloudFront, and then you see it worldwide. Freaking cool, right? I have to say, like, I, I got in love with the static websites, the whole thing runs in like in 10 seconds or less. You know, we have full deployment, and I actually have you know, technical writers pushing to production, right, every day, which is really cool. And S3 is a great way to host a website, right? Um, and Hugo, which you guys know Jekyll, is a variation of it written in Go, is crazily fast, and he's actually better, I think, has a couple more cool features than, than Jekyll. So we build this website, which is our mission, we actually have our blogs, we have our CTO writing how he thinks about security, there's my blog, why you should join, there's the team writing stuff, so this is our, we have a member of our team that her, her version of kicking out is to read the GDPR, right? This is really cool. <laughs> hey, there you go. Right? And so I literally go to her and say, oh, can you like read this 100 page and give me like the cliff notes, right? Or give me like the, the thing. But you know, then she writes this blog post about it, right? And then we get the hurry bit, right? So let me just walk you through it. So we build uh, a joint model security team, etc. So we now create challenges, right? And this is all you'll see programmatically built dynamic. So it's actually static, right? But it builds dynamic. So we build a whole bunch of challenges which are there, and this is all real world stuff, right? This is like AWS rootkit compromise, some habit that actually we use for hacking things, security threads, experience with Perl, the industry, whatever, right? This is all, and the idea is that we improve this all the time, right? This is a toy, you know, actually you can go in here, you can literally click on one of these things and there's a button that allows you to edit, right? So if you find the bug, you know, please, and I'll, I'll publish the website, the, this yeah. slides, right? Um, so, but you can see that like, this is real world scenarios, like, like AWS root key, right? If you haven't have a root key or AWS key compromise, you probably are not using AWS in production, right? So we have that, right? So this is like, hey, how would you do it, right? We got GDPR breach notification to your regulator, okay? How do you actually do it? We have set up, so our bar of entry is like, hey, you need to actually set up your own deployment website on GitHub and Jekyll, it's actually Hugo now, but hey, you know, if you can't do that, sorry, you know, that's almost like the bar we put for the team. Like, if you can't get your head around that, then, Sorry, right? That's, you know. Um, and we even do things which are really cool. So I actually now enjoy reading a CV. Because what I do is I go, oh, OK. So you said you have Crest and, and CBEST. All right, cool. Let me ask a question about it. Like we, do, we literally, so it takes me literally like five minutes to write something which is totally specific to a candidate. And then I put on a challenge. I have something blockchain. Cool. Let me see what you think about it. So we actually have cases where we literally create almost a challenge that's very personalized to an individual. Because we can go, oh, look, you talk about this, this, this. That's what I like about your CV. Let me see your story, right? Let me see what you come up with. And, um, and I think it's much more fair, right, to the candidate because they get to shine, right? They get to say, hey, I've done this stuff, and, and here's what I'm interested in. So we do this now for everything, for permanence, for contracts, even for Upwork, right? Reaching for the stuff we do part-time. We do this for everybody. It's very easy to create, and it looks like this. And then there's the, the challenge that are required. There is like, for example, stuff like special details, blah, blah, blah. And then we also put some optional things in there for the guys who will be more proactive, for the head of InfoSec, they're different. So we can almost like see what kind of skills we want the person to do, right? And then what's really powerful about all of this is how easy it is to create it. So all the content is in Markdown and is managed by GitHub. So we use GitHub to manage the content. So it means that if you go to these websites <coughs> and you go to something like this, this is actually the content, right? So, for example, when you look at the role file, 
This, this is like Google stuff. This is all uh, main value pairs. So the contract type you can see shows there. That guy shows there. That guy sh that's the what would you do section. That bit there is the what shows here. So literally, you make here, you go to GitHub or send a pull request, right? So any of you guys can go to GitHub now, send a pull request to this thing, and if one of us online, right, will accept the pull request and it will be live within 10 seconds. So yeah, so we push to production, like, you know, dozens of times a day. So, uh, and now what's really cool also, if you notice here, right, see that little thing there? That's actually the name of the file that you then put on the challenges. So for us to create one customized version of this is as simple as playing around with these things, right? So this is very easy to delegate, you know, I don't maintain this anymore. We actually have a dude in Canada that like maintains all this stuff, right? And it's pretty cool. So now the next question was how do we scale the submission parts, right? So this scales the creation part. How do we actually scale when people start sending this stuff, right? And it's funny because you, know, you get Word documents, all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Which is, again, doesn't scale, it's not normalized, yeah, yeah. So we can have actually, what we're going to do is we actually, oh, that, one more little thing. We could also create customized uh, candidate page where we actually give them an ID and then this is actually unique to a particular individual. So, how do we scale? We make them create a Google website, right? And for, we can actually set it up, we can actually password protect for them. So their answers are actually provided on already a powered, a powered website. And we use NetLiffy, which we found is pretty cool. So literally this serves a system where again you push to GitHub, NetLiffy builds it, you know, builds the Google, and then the whole thing goes live. So, so that again works really well. So basically, we only get involved the moment that there's actually a website that we can look. And then, it's, it's very, I look at it, right? It's like, then it's like, okay, now impress it, right? Like literally, you have a website, you can edit the thing. So there's already some cases where they do stuff, you go, wow, that's really cool, right? Or somebody just submits a vanilla website, and go, okay, fine, right? But you know, you're not really impressing here from a tech point of view, right? Your, your CV said that you're a technical expert, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, um, I don't know, right? Because you know, you can do a lot with those things, right? So, um, and then the final part is that once you succeed this, right, you get invited to the OWASP working session. So we're organizing a photo box, which the next one happening on the 20th of February, where we're going to talk about stuff we did at the summit, like the playbook, common format, SAM, GitHub security stuff, GDPR, etc. And basically, we invite the successful candidates that made so far to kind of join in and show us their leadership skills, their collaboration skills, you know, in a, in a nice and live environment. And the guys who basically made it there, they'll get to the face to, to the final set of interviews, and that's basically our recruitment process. Right. Uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, a talk or. Uh,